This review is going to be a little bit different than the rest of the reviews so far. That will be apparent soon. But first, we need to get the housekeeping out of the way. Hello and welcome to this Kickstarter review of the Dark Depths expansion for the Bones 5 Kickstarter. If you missed the reviews of the core set, the Dungeon Dwellers expansion, or the Daimyo expansion, you can click the card up in the top right corner or visit the playlist on my channel to catch those. If you want to get your fins on anything you see here in today's video, I cannot stress enough that the 5.5 Pledge Manager is closing very soon. If you miss it, you'll have to wait till the retail to get these, and who knows when that will be or what prices they'll have. If you want to get them at Kickstarter prices, scan the QR code or visit reapermini.com or pm.reapermini.com for more details. Now, without further ado, on with the review. Like I said, this review is going to be a little bit different. This $50 set has the most large or huge minis of any other expansion set of this Kickstarter at one of the best values. So, we're going to see some real whoppers today, but that doesn't mean we won't still catch a few small fries. There are plenty of humanoids and other sea beings present here, along with a few other tiny additions. But overall, the big selling point of this box set is going to be the massive minis and the level of detail that they're all presented in. I'm going to just say off the bat, Reapers have done themselves with these figures. Alright, alright, enough praise. Without further ado, let's get into the review. Before we get into all the sea creatures that we have here, we get a trio of shark fins. I don't know how useful they'll be, but, well, you have them if you ever just really want to freak your players out but don't have a shark mini to actually do it? Nah, you actually get plenty of sharks with this set. Although I don't know that any are actually to scale with those fins. We'll see. Along with the sharks, you get a couple of dolphins, like this one leaping out of the water. You can see with these smaller sea creatures that Reaper has put aside the clear floating peg strategy and opted in for a uh, coral stalagmite impalement strategy. As much as it sounds like I'm making fun of it, I actually prefer this look. It's a lot more natural and it, it just looks better in my opinion than the floating clear pegs, though sometimes it can't be avoided. But anyway, these sharks, dolphins, they're all pretty cool, but they're basically what they say on the tin. There's nothing too crazy about them. They're going to be great for any polymorphs or any sea creature encounters, but, you know, overall, very going to be very simple paint jobs. Aside from maybe the coral, get a little fancy there, but overall, not too much going on with these. But... A very welcome, very nice addition to the set. They're not the only sea creatures you'll get in this set, though. Right here we have a very lopsided devil ray. It's based on real rays, but it's clearly a fantasy creature, what with the rows of teeth and the, uh, well, general scary appearance. Real rays are filter feeders and crustacean munchers, so you'd be real shocked to see something like this if you were expecting, you know, your typical manta ray or stingray or something like that. He's a very lopsided on this little coral here, and I thought, oh, maybe I was gluing him in wrong, but no, that's how it's shaped. Some of the creatures in here are listed as dire variants of the fish or other beings that they're depicting. Well, this grouper is actually probably about the right size for some giant groupers out there. And if you've ever seen a, how a grouper eats, 
you know that this thing is probably just as dangerous as any of the rest of the big baddies in this little expansion set. Speaking of big, we have a giant clam with a massive pearl. I wouldn't go trying to retrieve it though. I feel like giant clams in this setting are probably a very dangerous thing to go reaching your arm into. Following those up, we have a few large sized fish. I suppose this is meant to be a great white or something of that variety. You know, great whites can actually leap out of the water to ensnare seals. I'm not aware of this ever happening to people, though. Probably because shark attacks are not actually that common and great whites don't actively patrol areas where people would be swimming. That would be quite a way to go, though. Now this is an exciting and unique figure, a Dunkleosteus. It's an armor-plated fish from Earth's late Devonian period, but I suppose it could be from your fantasy world's modern notions. They didn't have teeth, and instead used their armor plates like a pair of horrible shears. Frankly, I'd be more afraid of an encounter with this beast than one of the sharks. At least a shark could let you go. One of these would just slice off whatever it managed to nap. Plus, sharks rarely actually are trying to kill or even really maim people when they do bite. Yeah, we're more of a threat to them than they really are to us anyway. Next, we have this giant jellyfish, Cast and Clear. You know, it might actually be an appropriately sized species of jellyfish given how little we know about what lives in the ocean, but I digress. This mini comes in two parts, the jelly and the coral bubble column. At some point it came unassembled and I can't for the life of me get it slotted back in. No, it looks fine, especially with my glasses off. I probably won't even paint this one. It already looks table ready, though, as I've said before, resin often turns yellow over time, so, well, this one may need to be treated with some paint. For the last of our familiar foes, we have a Dire Moray. This is exactly the sort of foe that a party could really underestimate. Morias don't really attack often, but their sharp needle-like teeth would deal an astounding amount of piercing damage if they did. In D&D, if you add in the fact that this is an eel, I reckon it would end up with a pretty high AC. Pretty hard to hit. And they attack from typically little crevices and corals and rock formations so you guessing it probably will have half cover most of the fight too yeah this is the kind of thing that could really take out some pcs if they're not careful really looking forward to painting this mini not just for that reason but also because it would be a cool thing to play around with, with some yellows and greens. Thus ends the normal creatures. And now, on to the fantasy ones. Here we have a hippocampus. This would fit in well with the next expansion set we'll be covering. The hippocampus is a half horse, half fish, mount of the sea. It'd make a great canvas for painting bright and striking colors and patterns. There's just a lot to work with given the amount of frills and gills. It's definitely one of the more underrated figures from this collection. I think it gets overshadowed just because of the amount of bigger, larger, and perhaps more eye-catching minis later on. Goblins Ahoy! Yeah, these look like they just hopped off the neck of one flying Dutchman. You have here a sawnose shark goblin with his pointy trident. You got a shark head crab claw hand berserker. Always good in a pinch. 
We have this Nautilus Goblin. Seems a bit hard-headed. My personal favorite, this puffer fish goblin. Yeah, his ego might be a little inflated, but he does make a lot of great points. And finally, we have this Fiji mermaid looking goblinoid. Yep, that's another group of goblins with wild proportions. Again, getting to the Reaver doesn't really have a set standard goblinoid anymore, but hey, that's just fine by me. We've come to the mermaids. The mermaids in this set are actually rather large, or tall depending on how you think of them. They definitely don't qualify as medium-sized humanoids, that's for sure. These two are sirens. They may not be armed. But their charms and their songs are all the weapons they'll need to lure any lesser-willed party members down into the depths. Unless they're a barbarian who has activated their rage, because then you probably don't really have to worry about anything. Next, we have a couple of rangers. These two are armed, with some harpoon-like spears by the looks of it. I really like how the hair on all these mermaids looks. It has that free floating underwater thing going on. I think Reaver really achieved the submerged looks with all of these in particular. The fishy scales on the fish half are also really nice and the fins remind me of like a guppy or something the tail fins anyway overall very well executed designs in my opinion here's a couple of royal guard merfolk i like the classic greco roman look these have really harkens back to those atlantean sea folk roots the tridents are a bit bendy and I don't know how I feel about the anthery parts but overall these are some excellent well executed designs well you can't have royal guards without a royal two well guard so we have here the mermaid king with his great scepter of the seas and an imposing figure and then some other mermaid the queen I guess princess so there's actually a bonus mini the Reaper threw in later on during the Kickstarter. Looks like she's wielding some kind of pearl of power, or maybe she's just looking at it. By the way, I think it'll be pretty fun to paint. Altogether, we got so many quality mermaids in this set. I don't even know which to paint first. These are some of the best merfolk I've seen, and they make a great addition to my collection. These here are the slith or the slith i'm not really sure how it's pronounced i believe they're reapers analog for the sahwagon which are a D, D fish people that i also don't really know how to pronounce but you, you know i think that's what they're going for here. they are armed up like your typical sahwagon Though, you had that crossbowman back there. I don't know how efficient a crossbow is underwater, but, you know, whatever. And you have this spear harpoon person. Very long tail, very cool looking. Oh, they all have excellent tails, actually. You have this bruiser with four arms. A mutation that can happen among the Saswagin and cause them to rise up in the ranks because having more than two arms is cool. Seems like he'd make a great mini boss or something. Then there's this one who's meant to be a lady of some prominence, like a priest or something. I guess they can do magic. That's cool too. I feel like they captured that whole above it all look well by placing them uh, well above the height of the rest of them, even the big guy. It's not a huge rating party, but it is a quality one, that's for sure. Following that up, we have a couple of marrow. These are Reaper's Sea Ogres. 
I like the bit of seaweed, algae, kelp, whatever it is growing on them. It helps with that underwater look because the fishy details on these are very subtle. A little fin on the back of the leg or the arm, a tiny fin like ear. Without it, you could be forgiven for thinking that these were just swamp ogres or something. Which, hey, I mean, you could still use them as that. The snarls and the weapons on these are excellent. They take what could be a very plain mini into being a much more special one. I particularly like the spear toting marrow. The pointed spear, that is. He looks like he's about to thrust it right into a player's chest. Very threatening. But these two are ultimately just heralds of things to come. From here on out, all the minis are going to be giant or huge sized. And we start things off here with Nessie, a plesiosaur. She sat on a hollow rocky base held by two pegs, which you don't really need to glue her onto. The mini stands just fine on its own and doesn't fall off the base easily. This figure may get overshadowed by the other Whoppers in the set, but it has a lot of character and detail all its own. I really like the underbite on the mouth, the long tail, the sort of almost pincer-like look at its end, and the flipper spikes. They look like they could do some damage if needed. I think my favorite part of this figure, though, has to be the texturing. I really like the underbody, this that sort of crackly look that it has going on. As well as all the scales over the body, it'll be great to dry brush. But can't spend too much longer on this one. We have even bigger fish to fry. Or in this case, dragons. We have ourselves a sea dragon. I imagine this one's going to be a lot of folks' favorite. It's swimming over a sunken boat on a slightly angled floating peg. The base is pretty solid. Well, it's actually hollow underneath, but it looks really good is what I'm saying. It has a lot of coral texture to work with, and the boat actually is spilling just a little bit of treasure out into the reef. The barnacle is about this build and some of the other ones are triggering some slight phobia of mine though. You can see how it is posed up next to a, one of the larger sharks from earlier. The dragon is very detailed. The plates on the back look like fan corals and every single bit of this is just covered in some kind of texture. I haven't seen much of a flat area and over this whole thing. This is definitely a contender for best mini in the set, but I do think that there are a few more ahead worth our consideration. But let me know what you think once we get to the end of the video. Maybe the championship belt will go to the Crocosaurus. What a name. You know, there actually were ancient marine crocodilians that lived 100% out in the middle of the ocean but i don't think any of them got this massive and played it up i could be wrong though this mini seems to be circling over some atlantean ruin perhaps wherever those mermaids from earlier are from there's a lot going on down in these ruins you can see a little bit of a greco-roman style you see a bit of a freeze here i believe that's the term it's been a long time since art history the crocodilian is Pretty cool in its own self. It seems pretty well adapted to the ocean. Don't imagine this could come on land if it had to. It probably wouldn't if it had the opportunity to stay in the water though. It might be the only way your party could take something like this down. Because otherwise, I feel like it's going to be very difficult to get through all that armor plating. Neither of those can hold a count to the next one, though mostly because they lack hands and are underwater. Anyways, behold the Fathom Tyrant. 
an aquatic beholder or observer as reaper calls them mostly for copyright reasons i don't know why i haven't seen more designs like these it's a pretty ingenious take on the beholder concept i will say it doesn't have as many eye stalks as your typical beholder does but i think the giant claws probably make up for it you can see that wherever this thing layers it has taken out quite a few adventurers already this would make a lot of sense to me because this foe would pose a very threatening and challenging encounter to a party all the beholder needs to do is look at you and its cone of anti-magic could turn off whatever magical water breathing you happen to be using Add to that the increased movement speed and water for this guy and everything else on top of that. Your party being at disadvantage fighting in the water. And you basically have created a TPK machine. Not that that should be your goal as a dungeon master, but hey. <laughs> you have one in your back pocket now if you pick this up. Yeah, so this might be the deadliest thing in the depths. But is this the best mini of the collection? Well, there is still one more giant addition. And he's been in the background this whole time. Introducing the Sea Giant. This is the premier figure of the set, and with good reason. It has an anchor sword, a shipmast spear, all manner of ocean debris strapped across it as armor. A ship bound pauldron, a whole shield, a sash made from nets and rigging, a shark dangling from the waist, and a treasure chest hidden behind its back. Also, it has a little crab friend at its feet. I don't know if you can see that, but he's there. Basically what I'm saying is this mini is very heavily detailed and is huge. It's bigger than most other giants, only being challenged by the storm and cloud giants. We'll get to those later. I remember seeing the concept art and being really blown away by all the detail on there and being a little worried that they weren't going to be able to pull it off, but I can honestly say they have. And I also remember when they first showed a render of this and people were really worried that it wasn't going to be as big as they thought. No, this thing is indeed huge. Yeah, so the spear is a little bent on this guy, but... You know, this thing... It went beyond my expectations. I can fix this spear later. And you, when you consider the fact that the expansion costs 50 bucks, and given the amount of minis in it, I only paid about $1.30 per mini. So for $1.30, I got all of that? That's pretty insane to me. On that note, it's time to bring us in back to shore. This particular expansion is probably my favorite of the bunch. Not just because it has all these big minis, but because it presents such a good, cohesive theme. And it just oozes with good value. It is probably the best value for your money if you were going to pick up one of these expansion sets. If you were picking them up in preparation for a sea-based adventure because otherwise most of these won't really have any application so it gets knocked down on its versatility but i still gave this set an 11 out of 12. it's just too good i don't even know how reaper got away with selling this for only 50 bucks well if you want to pick it up for yourself don't wait the 5.5 pledge manager is gonna close soon and I 
they have a limited supply so this thing could be gone if you don't pick it up soon and then you'll have to wait till retail and i'm sure these are all be great and it'll be coming to retail before we know it but uh, i it's gonna be a slog waiting and then having to pay full price so so just check out the 5.5 if you're interested in these and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content it really helps me out it really helps the channel let me know what your favorite mini was what you would have rated this out of 12 and uh yeah have a good one let's go paint some minis